Hello and welcome. It's a great privilege to share this week's message with you. Hope you all enjoyed my message on Wednesday. And once again, we meet again via the internet. Today's passage is Acts chapter 20, verses 7 to 12. Let's wake up. Let's wake up and realize all that God has for us. It's only when we wake up we realize that we've been asleep. Are we asleep and don't even know it? Are you asleep physically? Are you asleep mentally, emotionally? It's time to wake up. God doesn't want us to be falling asleep. Be awake, be engaged, even in these trying times. Have you ever fallen asleep in church? Yes, it does happen. The classic line, I was just resting my eyes. Have any of you ever used that? Falling asleep in church happens. It has happened to many people over the years. A guy by the name of Eutychus is one of the first people recorded to ever fall asleep in church while a message was happening. He started a revolution. Many have followed his actions and have fallen asleep in church. So if you've got your Bible there, it's Acts 20, 7 to 12. Let's have a read. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept talking until midnight. There were many lamps upstairs in the room where they were meeting. Seated in a window, in a window was a young man named Eutychus, who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He is alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate it. After talking until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Sleeping is very important. Some people can fall asleep anywhere. Maybe you're like Eutychus. He fell asleep in a window. I remember one night when I was a teenager. There were crickets madly chirping out the front of our house that kept my mum awake. So my dad got out of bed, pyjamas and all, went down the stairs and out onto the front lawn and was stomping and jumping around to stop these chirping crickets so my mum could sleep. We all value our sleep, don't we? In Acts, the church had gathered to hear Paul. They were keen for his message, and so he talked on through the night. The place was packed. Everyone was excited. The room was well lit, and people knew that the church had gathered. It was late, but Paul talked on and on and on. And Eutychus falls into a deep sleep and falls out the window to his death. Paul knew his time was short with them, so he continued to speak. So this guy's listening, but his eyes are getting heavy, and he can't fight off sleep anymore, and falls asleep. Then he falls out of the window, hits the ground, and dies. He was sleeping in church. Some of you are asleep today. Maybe not physically, but spiritually. Maybe you've been asleep for a long time and you haven't realised it and missed those opportunities that God has placed before us. You might know about God, 
but you don't know him personally. You can know a lot about God, but not really know him. You need an encounter with Jesus Christ. You need to give your life to him. Have that personal encounter. It's time to wake up. Now I can know a lot about skydiving, how to pack a parachute, when to pull the rip cord, information about wind speed. I can know all the ins and outs, but I need to experience it. I need to have that encounter of jumping out of the plane to really know what skydiving is all about. You can sit in your seat for years and you can know a lot about Christianity but you need to have that encounter with Jesus until, you're la until you lay your life down and surrender to him until you let the Holy Spirit of God fill you until you have a real encounter with Jesus as your Lord and Saviour that's when you really know what Christianity is is all about. Some of you are asleep. I've observed that people will come along to church, they'll serve God, they'll do all the right things and then for some small reason they'll just drift away. Don't be asleep spiritually. Don't be asleep morally. We need an alarm to go off sometimes. I've got one for you. It's Ephesians chapter 5. 14 to 17. Wake up, O sleeper. Rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful how you should live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. You can know God. You and I can understand his ways. When God called you, reached out to you, when you became a Christian, a believer, a Christ follower. That's when you woke up. Friends, God knew we'd all need work. There are things we need to change, things we need to develop. Do you ever find yourself saying sorry to God? Oh, I'm sorry God for that. Forgive me for this. I'm so slow. I'll do better next time. I should be able to handle that by now. I'm sorry. Friends, God is not surprised. God knows you would need some work. God knows I need work. God knows. We can stop apologising because God knows. He knows we need to develop. He knows we need to grow. He knows. We don't need to remind him of our shortcomings. Don't let our lack of faith and action become excuses. God wants us to wake up and smell the coffee. Maybe you've enjoyed a cup today. Stop reminding God how much you fall short and start praising him for how far you've come. Those doors, those blessings, those things that have opened in your life because you have faithfully followed and faithfully served and faithfully honoured God in your Christian walk. Align yourself with Jesus Christ. God knows all about you. He is not surprised. He has changed you from the inside out. He's reshaping your life if you let him. And while this might be a long process, he loves us and cares for us and uses us. Because he does not see your life as you see it. 
He sees your future. He sees what you, be, you are becoming. He sees the beginning, the middle and the end. Remember, he let Judas be one of the twelve. He wasn't perfect. Some of us need to wake up and stop blaming God and start living for him. Life will get back to normal. But it's going to take a bit of time. Be a blessing and be a support to those around you. Don't get trapped just because you're inside. Use this time as a time of growth. We have an opportunity to know Christ Jesus more and more and more. Are you awake? In Acts chapter 24, verse 24 and 25, we read, After some days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now, when I have a more convenient time I will call for you. A more convenient time. Friend Satan says to us all the time, don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. Wait for a more convenient time. Oh, tomorrow you can open your Bible. Oh, tomorrow you can pray. You can get back to that Bible reading later. Don't bother people with your problems or your needs. Oh, you don't need to open that email from Michael, your pastor. Let us wake up. He doesn't want you to be falling asleep and to fall away. Some of us have been asleep long enough. Are you making time for God? Because he has a lot of time for you. Friends, don't lose focus. Don't lose momentum. Let us keep each other accountable over these days and weeks. The Bible was written for application and transformation. Nothing spiritual will happen if the words just stay on the page. Let us read it. Let us apply it. Let our lives be enriched and transformed. Have you been asleep? You're part of the greatest movement on planet Earth. That is the local church. Wake up, O oh sleeper. And let Christ shine on you today. Wake up and receive God's grace and mercy and forgiveness. Don't fall asleep like Eutychus and miss out what God wants to say to you right now. Right now. Here this day. Let us wake up. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you. That we uh, will be awake to your word and awake to your spirit and awake to what you're doing in our lives as a church community. Today, tomorrow, over the next weeks and months, we thank you that you are doing your transforming work. And we are awake and we are listening and we are ready to act. In Jesus' name, amen.